Anyway, let's look at this. Multiplayer overview. I haven't actually seen this shit yet, so I'm curious as to what it is, if it's like anything different. Is it actually Microsoft talking about the game? I don't know. Crikey, mate. It's that Drongo Batchy. What's going on, Carbuncle? Just the feeling of, like, being in a firefight and hearing the, the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. My gunner's upside down, and he's, like, laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. <laughs> how excited I was with, like, this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. You know, she's not wrong when you just absolutely fucking humiliate someone with a pistol. So good. Chilling out, how you been? I've been really good. I've had a couple of um, good days with Weedy, just hanging out and stuff like that. Um, just going back into Final Fantasy tonight, looking at some of the Halo shit here. And then, uh, yeah, and I'm going to go do, maybe finish up Heaven's Ward tonight. So keen. Just keen. Something here for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. What is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, <laughs> kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic Halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's going to evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge, I think, was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a, in a in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. Yes! Oh my fucking God. I'm so glad to hear that. Cause like, I, I felt that when watching this video, cause man, like I enjoyed the campaigns of four and five, but it almost looked too plasticky and shiny for what Halo is. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that they're, like, noticing that that's what people want. The setup in the back, though. Yeah, they have... They, I'm guessing that's their office shit. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like what is the core foundation of what made the great Halo multiplayer arena matches great. Halo, it's really about fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And then once they start running around, it's about scavenging. It's about finding new toys and, and kind of developing your play style. Yeah, right. Because you would... Halo 4 and 5, you would have like a predetermined fucking loadout thing. And... It just didn't feel like you were starting off on even terms or like taking advantage of power weapons and stuff like that. Like it, like it was weird as someone that's like, okay, I only want to play MLG game type where it's like dead fucking even, you know, you, you, you know, I don't know. People do it in MOBAs and stuff like that, where they like, they know how long it takes for certain things to respawn on the map or whatever, based on when they kill it on the timer and stuff like that. With Halo, it was the same thing. It's like, it was like three minutes or something for certain types of power weapons and shit like that that you would kind of keep, like, uh, track of on the on the thing, the timer and whatever. And man, I just feel like, like the new ones, it's like they just give you everything and then, like, it, it, it seemed kind of cheesy. It felt like, it felt like it was trying to become Call of Duty and that's not what people play Halo for. They would play Call of Duty if they wanted that. Mona's, it's required to be a high-level player. Stuff like that. You had to know all the different timers. Yeah, exactly, right? It's a thing that uh, separate the boys from men. MOBAs. Yeah. 
it's it's really like it's those kind of things that make it special and make it like the difference between um like the top tier players and whatnot you know just that that little bit of like knowledge you know that like that might seem elitist but it's like that's the kind of shit that makes it fun you know instead of it just being like a wild fucking uno card where anything mixed bag of marbles goes you know fucking random ass shit it just doesn't seem consistent that's just me man how does he run through the match i'm so glad to hear this um i feel like uh the answer to that question is is the sandbox like the sandbox is halo when we set out to look at Halo Infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is, there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to Halo, but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Equipment is back, but equipment is kind of, has, the, has, a, has a bigger voice than ever before. We ask questions to ourselves of uh, if you could go after you know, a power weapon to get a bunch of kills, uh, would you do that or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw it as like another avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature of, you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. Yeah, I like that, right? I remember um, like, it was like an actual like tactic in it, in, in the older Halo games. It's like when, when you have like a power weapon or something like that and you don't have like, you don't use all the ammo for it or whatever you would actually try and like kill yourself or deny yourself and jump off like buildings and shit to stop people from getting it or whatever i really like that you better climb stuff like that is what matters yeah yeah exactly man you're all all, all it over it is vehicles we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems when i take damage in my warthog uh my my wheels can get blown off my hood could get blown off there's different aspects of the vehicle that change how my vehicle handles now. And that's something that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire. Hey, son, I do, man. You've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time, and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you wanna put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives, and that is what is really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt in MP and campaign. That's pretty cool. The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they want to do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat, what kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? For me, BTV is all about experience. Fuck, this is gonna make me want to get an Xbox. Silent, it's apparently gonna be available on PC. And multiplayer is gonna be free as well. So that means a lot more people will be playing it. They, they don't have to worry about uh, buying the game or anything. Like, people will be on, more on board. I imagine it, I hope that it's a, a more regulated version of, like, COD Warzone. But with, like quite a lot of popularity you know pc master race <laughs> no it's more like i don't want to if i have the option of not buying a console and spending the money it's more the loss of the money like i, I i'm always an xbox guy i love the xboxes but like i'd rather not pay the money <laughs> i could just plug my my xbox remote into my pc and play but yeah experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the, play, playing the previous games and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them and we have a commander in your ear telling you that 
Pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. Tank is inbound. We have Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like, like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players, this is just a certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. The announcer is your big game plan. Oh, I do, Weedy, I do. Okay, player expression. Please tell me how you're going to make the reward system. This is very important to keep people engaged. Play moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play. Check. Personal AI is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs a flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment to moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI and each one of those are different voices so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best. That's kind of cool. They add to the sense of like me as a, as a Spartan being more important and, and for us in multiplayer it is really about becoming a spartan your spartan you are yeah so you get your own like little personal cortana like it's not really like the same to the same extent by any means but like even just having your own voice in your head that you get to like choose to to be your partner that's kind of cool i like taylor more than cod so i may actually pick this up not gonna lie fuck yeah get on it man are you inside of the Halo universe? The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons and we've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles have a have a huge pool of customizations too. We support customization in the game. Even vehicles Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us the opportunity arms. to craft. Wait, no, choose prosthetics for the first time. No, in Reach there was that. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I can be a fashion whore in Halo, say no more, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm wondering at what cost, though. After some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. Yes! Oh my god, thank you! Oh my god, I need it to hear that so bad. Oh, let's, see, let's listen to it one more time, hold on. Let's listen to it one more time. Very important to us that everyone understands exactly how this from a player first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we oh! Yes! <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. Yes! No loot boxes, man. No loot boxes. Thank fucking God. Oh. <laughs> Whiskey, my, my comrade. The unbreakable union of free republics is united forever by the great rush. Long live the united mighty Soviet Union created by the will of the peoples. <laughs> Hey man, <laughs> hope you've been well, dude. We have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the Battle Pass. The Halo battle, battle Pass? pass will okay, cool. never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old Battle Passes as well as the current Battle Pass and choose which Battle Pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards yes, are sick. so you're never going to be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. Yes. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. Yes! 
Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, might just be, might just be making a comeback, boys. Maybe the old patchy one three two will be making a comeback, boys. I don't know, man. And we might be making a comeback. It's pretty exciting stuff right there. I tell you what. Shut up and take my fucking money. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the samurai already. That's yeah, one of our event armor cores. And that's going to be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. With us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update, there's, there's, They'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. Everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game to be yes. on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make cross-play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have pcs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends yes Why academy okay i have no idea what this is be a Spartan. The academy is a place that you can go uh with an mp to kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking it's a series of experiences both a tutorial to get started for the first time weapon drills to practice with specific items and also training mode that you can use to just get warm explore the game as you want to that's good i really like that option that's like in valorant valorant did that didn't they that's so good. Hey, Bell. How you doing, man? What's going on? Waiting for Battlefield 2049? Nah, I'm waiting for Halo now. Fight, like... <laughs> this, this is my shit, man. To Halo, let's help them learn what this universe is about. Some of these characters, what, what are they about? And help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal with bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launch is absolutely- I don't really know how I feel about bots. I don't really care too much that they're, they're an option on the side. I just hope that it's not really a thing where they like, have multiplayer game, someone drops out of a multiplayer game that gets replaced with a bot. If the bots are just specifically academy thing where people that are new want to like practice against them without without the pressures of like trash talking and shit like that. I that I'm totally down for that. That's that's totally cool. Sure. But yeah, we'll see. Just doing them dailies? Nice. Russia and Putin away for battlefield. <laughs> critical right and cheeky has always been about the community <laughs> conversation we want to make sure we hear our players make changes where we can based on that feedback make sure the game is ready for launch and then even beyond launch what i'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands you know whether it's seeing what people make in forge or the content that they're able to create with theater watching streamers go after the game to get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways. Wait, 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 wait. Absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm 
genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game. To get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you. The Halo Insider program is new Halo fans and community members can partner with 343 Industries to improve our games. As a Halo Insider, you'll have the opportunity to regularly provide feedback and insights to help shape and inform current franchise initiatives. You will also be given exclusive opportunities to participate in public flights of in-game of in-progress Halo game releases. Okay. Okay. If we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that uh, as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan. Launch is just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently. And that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to the road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Fuck yeah, man. <sighs> when does it come out? Holiday 2021. I don't know when that is, man. Is it true there isn't a campaign? No, there is definitely a campaign. 100% campaign. This is just like a multiplayer focused video here. This is more important to me than the campaign even, to be honest. When if you're healing this diamond weapon? Uh, my nips are so sensitive right now from that. It's so, it's so exciting, isn't it? It's so exciting. You know, like, even if you're not really, like, a massive, like, Halo fan, um, like myself, I feel like the fact that it's, um, you know, it's free, right? It's a free, full-on multiplayer experience that you can play, just like, like, Warzone and shit. You know, just because it's, like, free, right? We'll be able to... <sighs> we'll be able to have more people, like, get into it for the first time as well. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. 